Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. And today I'm sitting down with Katherine Reitman. The actress, director, and writer is the co-creator of the CBC show Working Moms, which follows four mothers navigating the struggles of urban motherhood, including moody toddlers, careers, and identity crises. Take a look. Go on, shake me, shake until I give it up. When I'm down, baby, I know that we can make some love. So go on, challenge me, take the reins and see. Watch me squirm, baby, but you are just what I need. And I have never played a fair game. Buddy? Hey, are you okay? Ah! Put your hands together for Katherine Reitman. I almost missed my cue because I'm so into that clip. I binge watched like five or six episodes of this yesterday, and that was literally like made, I was dying. Because, Thank you. Um, that's how I imagine parenthood to be. It's like a. It's bear a lot attack. of bears. There's a lot yeah. of bears. What? I don't know how many mothers there are in the crowd here, but it's largely just bears and babies. Yes. And trying to keep the baby alive from the bears. And the bears exactly. alive from the babies. Exactly. And like the anxieties are like it just like that is I think the perfect reflection of what parenthood is. So well, it, well is, it becomes like a battle cry, right? <laughs> I mean, I think what like so many working mothers or stay-at-home mothers would agree on is that people stop looking at you like a person. Yeah. They stop treating you like the person you studied to be in school and mm -hmm. you spent your whole life becoming and developing. So that moment's really meant to be a battle cry. Yeah at the identity crisis of motherhood. Right, and then her singing to the baby, and you have to watch the episode, but that is what really got me. Was, <laughs> yes. It was a call back to something earlier that I thought was really hilarious. Um, this show is in its third season in Canada, but now US audiences are going to get to see it. It's coming to Netflix on February 22nd, which is huge. Huge, we're so excited. I mean, I'm, I'm so proud of our home. I'm so proud of CBC in Canada, because they, they green, Sally Caddo. Yeah saw this, this little tape I made, this eight minute tape my husband and I made, and she said, this, this needs to exist. A show like this, where the authenticity of motherhood needs to be out there. Mm -hmm. And the fact that now America and the rest of the world are gonna see it on Netflix this Friday, February 22nd, <laughs> Couldn't be prouder. So take me back to the beginning. Um, this is your baby. You and your husband created this show together. So take me back in the beginning why you felt like these stories need to be told in this way. Uh, it's kind of an awkward story, but I, um, after I gave birth to my first kid, I had postpartum depression, and I kept fantasizing about driving, driving somewhere and that like a car would just hit me and take me away. Yeah. Not kill me, I'm not suicidal, just put me in a hospital with like, you know, some nice morphine and some food delivery service. I knew my kid would be fine. My, my husband's very good if he's watching. <laughs> he's a very good husband. Um, but just that I could get like a break, a brain dead vacation. Um, and so I went to my first mommy and me and I brought that up thinking all the moms are gonna be like, I hear you. Right. They changed the subject immediately. Uh... And one of them walked me back to my car and it's like, you should stop coming. <gasps> and I was like, what? How is this not the, pl the exact place that we're paying for, by the way? where we can connect about this and talk about how weird all of this is. Yeah. And so it was from that that my husband was like, you gotta start writing something. And so this show was birthed. And it does center around Kate. Um, and she is this very successful businesswoman and she's just had her first baby and now she's going back to work and navigating all of that. Um, you are obviously a working mom. So how much of that is personal for you? 
It's all personal. Yeah. I mean, Kate and Frankie, Jenny are all elements of my very bad personality. Um, my anger, my lost child, my vanity, my painful ambition are all, and I know I'm not alone in this. In Canada, women stop me all the time saying, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed to say this, but I'm a Jenny. Or God, I'm such a Frankie, thank you for talking about postpartum or whatever it is. So they're all based off of my real life stories or stories from our writer's room. Definitely. And what was casting like? Because I have to say, this... Isn't it the most yeah, amazing cast? it's really great. I mean, Frankie <laughs> kills me. Just, I mean, that character is so funny. And Juno actress, Rinaldi yeah. is so brilliant. And I mean, look, forget this. These three are where the show is at. Yeah. Um, I'm lucky enough to have become friends with them in real life. And I, I'm just floored by the... They're just, they're so brilliant every day. They, they completely rule. It is like the, like, Sex in the City kind of crew where like they're all so extreme but then you can see yourself in all of them and I think that's what makes it so relatable even if you don't have a child it's because you can imagine that's what you're going to be like or what those situations would feel like for you I think what surprised me so much was I really thought people would watch the show and connect to the relationships between either the wife and wife or the husbands and wife and how hard it is to have a kid but in fact it was people's connection with the fierce female friendship yeah how much they love Kate and Anne's friendship, how much people lean on it. Because in so many of our lives, we kind of end up leaning on our friends more than our partners. Yeah. And these mommy groups, too, I think it shows oh. a really honest, honest take on them. Because I think people are like, oh, it's great. It's this like, beautiful sisterhood and blah, blah, blah. But like you've mentioned, there can be a lot of criticism in these groups and a lot of you feeling bad about things that you thought were normal. Well, you know what it is? There's just so much dishonesty with motherhood in general. Yeah and like the representation of how mothers are to appear, whether it's like the broad appeal of comedies with dirty diapers and being a bad mom or the like after school special of how dark it is. But the truth is it's just a lot of really embarrassing, humiliating moments yeah. where you keep going, God, I swear to God when I was 20, if you told me I'd be standing here in the middle of the night awake, yeah. like doing everything I can not to wake a screaming infant, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> Or like, <laughs> I use the C word around my kid, <laughs> that whole line where you're like, anyway, you guys got to watch. I don't want to ruin it for you, but it's like, I, so I would love that cuss, you love that. Scene. Yeah, I would like cuss around my kid and I'm sure, feel, I'm sure women feel judged for that. But like, sometimes you have to because sometimes kids are assholes. Can't. It's not can't. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, and you guys, uh, this is set in Toronto. It is. So is there anything specific about the, the mom culture in Toronto that made that a good place to, to set the show? Toronto's just an amazing place to shoot, mm -hmm. and it's, it's such a beautiful city to capture, which we, we do on the show, but look, being a mom, the culture of mom, the problem with the lack of representation of mom exists everywhere, and I think it's why Netflix picked it up, is that this is the world. Yeah. Look, dual income households are a reality now. They're, they're you know, more common than single income households, so I think these are the, st women are going back to work, they're choosing either not to have kids or just to have fewer children. And so I think these are stories that women will identify with. Definitely, and the stories go beyond just the motherhood part. A lot of it is also their relationships with their partners. Um, your husband plays your husband in the I show? I know. He's take so cute. <laughs> so take me through that uh, decision. Like you how know. we fell in love? Yeah, take me back to the beginning. <laughs> First date. <laughs> His birth. Um, yeah, look, he... To be honest, I think, here's a little inside scoop, I think it was him being jealous, okay. if I'm being totally honest. Because I was like, God, think about who could play my husband on the show. This could be a lot of fun. And he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he was like, I think I will be the one kissing you episode after episode. Thank you very much. Fair. And now he plays my husband. Yeah. And he does a great job. He does a great job. Great and job. I think that the chemistry works because the chemistry is real, you know? Totally. That totally And in fact, through. sometimes the baby on the show is my real baby. I was going to ask, because I know that you, you know, you have a family who's in this industry. I know you appeared in your father's films as a kid. And now I heard that your child has made appearances in, in your show. Yes, I'm sure he was less of a jerk about it than I was. <laughs> Were but you a jerk? <laughs> no. But he was, uh, yeah, I was, he was three months old when we started shooting season one. And... Um, I actually stopped producing milk just out of like stress and lack of sleep. And the storyline was that the baby decides not to latch on because there's no milk and it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. But in fact, the two twin boys who played my, you know, because in, in the TV industry, if you have one baby, it's usually twins. So my twin boys were both asleep on the day and my three month old was happened to be visiting. So I breastfed him on the show and he latched on, which he hadn't in weeks. Yeah. And that ended up being the new ending of, uh, the second episode. Right, so is that emotion that's coming from you kind of real then? 
Oh, you better believe it. He latched on for the first time in weeks. I was a wreck. Yeah. And it's an emotional scene, so it's kind of cool to know that that was a real journey. A real you were moment. On. Yeah. God, that is so and my tough. little Liam. Yeah. So cute. <laughs> yeah. Will he be making any more appearances? Oh, God. I, I want them to have a wonderful, grounded, normal childhood. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned uh, some of the topics that you guys cover, and they all seem to be very important in their own ways postpartum, but also just things going back to work and the identity, the self-worth part of it seems to be a common thread through a lot of it. The struggles of a woman just trying to reconnect with who she was before the baby. Yeah, totally. Uh, I think the identity crisis, and I don't think this only happens with people who have children. I think something happens in your like late 20s, early 30s, where all of a sudden we're expected to quantum leap. Mm -hmm. Like there's, it, it doesn't appear to, like, no one expects a gradual path anymore. It has to be with all of a sudden you live in this kind of a place and you're in this kind of a relationship and your face looks like this and your, your hair looks like this and your wardrobe looks like in your friendships and your car. And I just don't think that's, realistic, especially now. And the more we can sort of break that myth and talk about how difficult it is to transition into that or lack of transition to that, the better. Yeah. And I know behind the scenes too, you're doing a lot of work to empower women. Um, we talked in the back, you said your department heads are primarily female. 70%, 69% technically. That's really, really rare. That's and really unheard of. Yeah. yeah. Of so why was that important for you? Well, look, we got we got to change the game. I don't think that's a mystery to anybody. Um, that four percent terrifying number that came out this year is real. Um, I'm really lucky that I get to be the showrunner of my own series, and with great power <laughs> comes hiring more women. Uh, so yeah, I, I go out of my way to hire women, and it's challenging not because women aren't talented, but because their resumes are lacking mm -hmm. because they haven't been given opportunity that men have. So for me, it had to be about making smart choices where if I didn't see the, uh, the experience I needed, speaking to them, and I can't tell you how many times I would say in an interview, look, I don't see it here, but I want to see it here, so tell me. Yeah. Tell me what I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. And because of that conversation and how transparent it was up front, out the gates, they deliver every day on that set. And our set is known, and I think if you ask someone outside of me or outside of these four people, they would, they would reiterate this. They would say it's any cliche you've heard about working with women that it's catty or it's gossipy or over-emotional. There was none of that on our set. Our set was productive, supportive, constructive, not emotional. Um, it was one of the least gossipy sets I've ever worked on as an actor. Yeah. So it, it was, uh, I have no regrets about hiring that many women. I'd do it again. I have to imagine, though, it's like that because you're setting the tone. I mean, you're the showrunner, you're the director, you're, I think you're very much who people are looking to, right, for guidance. So I think it also reflects on you. It's like if you create a positive environment, I think people will live up to oh, that expectation. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, and I also know that um, being a female director probably comes with some struggles. I read in an interview with you that sometimes you had issues with men who were older than you having a problem taking instructions from you. <laughs> yes, every <laughs> once in a while, I'm not the first person to say this, but yeah, that yeah. being a younger-ish female director that sometimes men don't wanna take direction from you, sometimes older women don't wanna take direction from you. Um, but it's, you know, it's part of the growth, the growth spurt comes with, you know, I think there's pains. There's pains just like a teenager would experience in growing up, so we're, we have to, continue pushing our agenda and stay calm and focused and I try to do as much homework as I can before coming so that when I do confront that moment I can do so steadily yeah. but yeah do I cry at home in the shower sure I cry <laughs> we all do Look, we all cry sometimes <laughs> we all do so uh back to the show are there any uh topics that you're really looking forward to expanding on or exploring that you haven't had the chance to talk about yet Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, as the kids get older, you just get, they start to talk back. There's much more material to, and the more your relationship is challenged. But um, season one, which is coming out this Friday, February 22nd, uh, covers sort of the initial breakthrough of reintegrating into work after the identity crisis of having a child. But season two and season three, which have aired on the CBC Canada and soon on Netflix, um, we get into some pretty cool territory. Yeah. When do those other two seasons come out? So season one, this Friday, February yeah. 22nd, season two, April 12th, and season three, we have yet to release a date. Right. Um, 
have you had a chance to really like look back at this journey because it sounded like it was a, a labor of love and now it's expanding so quickly like what do you just feel about all of that it's wild man it's it's been a wild ride look i had a three month old when we started shooting the first season um and for any of you who've had a child out there you know what that means <laughs> I, it, I was literally in the most hormonal roller coaster of my life so looking back on it now i I wish I could tell myself that it's okay and to calm down and, I mean, talk about quantum leaps, right? But it's, I'm, I'm very proud of the journey. Yeah. And it's not the only thing you're doing also. I mean, I've seen you on Blackish and it's always sunny. You're still acting on other projects. I should stop, right? Yeah. I mean, are you exhausted? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're just, you're just tired. <laughs> um, and so I, I'm not going to ask that question of how do you balance it all. I'm more interested in, um, your self-care routine, just like, what do you do for you? It's so boring, but it, you know, the basics, I wish I could be like, there's a plant <laughs> found in the desert, right. eat it once a year on a full moon. <laughs> no. Um, it's, you know, it's the basic stuff. I drink a ton of water. I don't over caffeinate. Um, but look, it's also play, right? I mean, you work hard, but I, I love to drink. <laughs> I love to have fun. I love playing with my friends and getting silly with my husband and, getting crazy with my kids, drinking with my kids. Yeah. <laughs> kids are the best drinkers. The key to balance is to drinking with your children. But you don't imagine? you feel like toddlers are little drunk people anyway? Oh, fully. So I was just FaceTiming with my two-year-old, and he's like, love you, mommy, as he, like, <laughs> fell down a couple stairs. I'm like, you all right? My husband's like, he's fine. I'm like, get that kid some water. The tequila. He needs a coffee. You. I love that, also, I was just making this connection, the character you play on Blackish, and then Kate, they both work in spaces that are mainly male-dominated, and they kind of have to be these quick, witty... It's as if the world were like that. Right. Many stories could be based on that. Right. But what about it? you? I've been in boys' clubs all my life. I grew up with three older brothers. Oh, you've it's literally... It's all I know, knew for the beginning of my life. You probably can wrestle like a madman. Oh, huh? I headbutt. It's the only... You headbutt? Yeah. Yeah. That's not fair. That's how much of an animal I am. Yeah. No, because look, they're bigger and stronger than you, so you wrestle and it, it never goes your way. I thought I, it was just supposed to be like, you know, a foot to the D. Oh, well, that You seems, headbutt? I like, yeah, I would headbutt. That was my only way to win. All right, remind me um, not to wrestle you. Yeah, don't. I will don't. win. Don't. <laughs> I was also fair really enough. into the WWE, so that's a whole. Okay, yeah. I'm starting to get a big picture right now. You're getting to know me. I like it. But what is it that's fun of, uh, to play those women, you know, on TV? Because I think the characters are so dynamic and, and that they have to kind of like prove themselves in a way in these spaces. Yeah, even I mean, more. look, any, any situation where you feel pigeonholed, uh, the character feels pigeonholed, yeah. is this great opportunity to rebel against that. And you get to sort of release both the anger and the vulnerability that combat it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's certainly a character I identify with both of those characters too. I, that, I think that's why I resonate with them because uh, they both just seem so dynamic and there's, I almost feel like in some way, like the blackish character, we're getting like more of her life in this character in a way. Like totally. what she would be like at home because she's doesn't really, you don't really get to see that. Yeah. You know? That's, That's a, just me spitballing. I don't no, know. No, it's very intuitive. <laughs> okay. Don't headbutt me. I thought okay. it's a good idea. <laughs> I won't. I'll try not to. Just yeah, don't try you. to wrestle me. Okay. Cool. We both win. <laughs> I'm going to try to wrestle her. I can't stop now. I feel challenged. <laughs> I think it's a good time to go to the audience. Sure. Uh, do we have two questions? Right here. Hi. Does your shirt. OMG. <laughs> Danny Kind. I cannot wait to show you this photo. Um, can so we show that on camera? Yeah. No, because there's swear words. Oh, we can cuss here. Oh, you can? Yeah. Her shirt says Catherine fucking Reitman. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> First of its kind. <laughs> so um, I really love the show. If I were stranded on a deserted island and I could bring one piece of television with me, it'd be the 2005 episode. It's oh, my favorite. Thank you. So my question is, why do you think people respond so much to the Kate and Anne dynamic rather than any of the uh, relationships? Um, and also, are you ever going to make them get together? Because I know everyone would like that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Um, to answer your first question, uh, she's speaking about these two characters and their fierce female friendship, which people have really responded beautifully to. Thank you for that question. Thank you for having the courage to ask the question. Um, I think for these two, because their relationships with their partners, I mean, uh, in real life, your relationship with your partner, they witness your, your darkest moments, your brightest moments, and there's something about a friendship where our lenses change. We have more acceptance with each other than we do with our partners. And I don't think I even knew this until the end of season one, hearing fans speak like this about how much they loved these two together. Um, and I think this particular fan has done a beautiful job of actually cutting moments from throughout the seasons of their relationship mm -hmm. 
it's it's a really it's a beautiful thing that ended up making me realize that in my own life I need to work on my friendships more. Yeah. Like talk about meta. Um, and as far as them hooking up, relax. <laughs> Women can't escape that question. Like, I love the closeness. I never even thought about that. I'm like, they need each other. They are in a relationship with each other. That's enough for me. Yeah, like, well, Danny occasionally is like, should we kiss? I'm like, relax. <laughs> relax. Just slow your roll. Uh, next question. Hi. Um, I was wondering, so you, you created this, and you had your YouTube show, and I was wondering, like, what inspired you or made you want to create your own projects for yourself? Um, rejection and desperation, largely. Mm -hmm. uh, truly. I think as an actor or as a, I've dabbled in hosting, I think it, you feel often so, and I, believe me, I'm not speaking to your experience. I'm speaking strictly from my experience, which is I felt limited, I felt pigeonholed, um, I felt like I couldn't be the three-dimensional person that I am. More so, I felt actually more limited in hosting than acting. Sorry, limited in acting than hosting, where I couldn't be all of me. Um, and so, for the YouTube show, I did a movie review show that's pretty wacky, um, and, it was wonderful because I got to week after week write something and sort of learn and, and fail in a very bold way. And then for this show, it was great to be able to write not just one but four really dynamic female characters. And they didn't have to just be the best friend or just look a certain way or just be wallflowers. It was about showing you know, how flawed they really were. So that was pretty exciting. I quit now, I guess my job. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. Stay in it. <laughs> Balance um, it, don't headbutt me. Everything you just said, I think is why I connected with the show and why I think uh, US viewers will. Because there is this authenticity and honesty and showing that uh, motherhood, while worth it, isn't always glamorous, right? And just balancing those things is really important, I think, for a lot of new moms. Because I have a lot of friends, there's so much pressure. Ugh. And just being able to laugh at it and call it what it is, I think helps people just get through the day sometimes. Oh, please. And if you're stuck at home, the, the greatest job of all is stay at home, mother. If, I mean, not the greatest, the hardest job of all. I've done it too. When you're on social media all day, seeing the perfectionism that is so many mothers, well, what they're portraying, yeah. I mean, that's torture. It's horrible. That's actual women on woman hate. <laughs> it's, it's really bad. Yeah, it is. Before we go, we do have one more question from Twitter. Skates NYC wants to know, I quit my full-time job when my daughter called the nanny mommy, but now I'm fully part now fully part of our two income family. And my question to you is, what is your advice to those who have been out of the workforce for a baby? My advice? Oh God, I think advice questions are so dangerous. Um, only because we all have our own path and you do you. Uh, what advice do I have? Take time for yourself. Carve out moments for yourself where you can feel like you. Uh, keep watering your plant, as they say. and. Um, the grass is always greener, you know, and don't buy the cow, milk it. <laughs> the early bird gets that worm. Uh, if you, yes, early. Yes, that's great advice. <laughs> really sound advice. Um, but I also think this this tweet, they should watch the show because I think there's some fun kind of tangible things to navigate. Wait, help you navigate your real life too. Well, yes, and it's something like, don't be afraid to fail. That is something I can say with all confidence. And we get criticized on the show sometimes for flawed choices our characters make, which is so ironic because I don't think Walter White or uh, John Hamm on Mad Men is being criticized for his choices. But get out there and make some mistakes. F you know, fail boldly, light yourself on fire. Don't light yourself on fire. Don't light yourself on fire. <laughs> That's really good advice. Thank you. If you guys want to check out Working Moms, it premieres on Netflix on February 22nd. Give it up for Catherine Reitman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.